Hi, it's Jan Beta, and if you are following my channel here, um, you probably know that I did a little recreation of my Amiga 500 setup thing series over Christmas. And this is the original memory expansion. This is like 512 kilobytes of RAM that go into the trapdoor of the Amiga 500. And I thought in the initial um, tests of this, this didn't work. But in fact, I found out that this actually works. Except for the clock, I re removed the clock battery, which has leaked pretty badly across this area of the board here. Uh, and this didn't work because, don't know if you can see it properly, but there, let me point at these here, there's some corrosion on the uh, little, on the metal plating in the uh, header here. So some of the pins didn't make good contact that were coming from the Amiga expansion bus. So that's why, or probably why, this whole thing didn't work in the first place. Uh, scrapped away some of it and it started working. So the RAM on here is absolutely fine. I did some RAM tests and stuff like that and ran games. Uh, it was absolutely fine. And this is uh, the expansion that belongs in my Amiga, really. This is the right revision of it and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do today is to try and clean up this area here. Uh, basically if you have corrosion like this what you have to do is to take away all the corroded parts. So I'm going to scrape off the traces and the um, layers of uh, solder mask here. Which is probably going to be pretty easy because it becomes pretty brittle and it corrodes like this. Uh, and then I'm going to do, then I'm going to try to replace the original battery that is uh, like like a uh, rechargeable battery that is charged by the circuitry. I'm going to replace that with the coin cell and um, mod some of the circuitry on here so the voltage that is supposed to charge the battery is not coming through to the battery because you don't want to charge a regular coin cell that I'm going to use. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. So let's get right to it. So the first thing I did was take a photograph of the uh, whole PCB so I know where the traces supposedly are. And there are, it's not that, there are plenty of um, schematics and photos online about these. These are pretty standard. So I'm going to scrap away uh, the remainder of the corrosion there. Because if you don't remove the corrosion, this is like a, a fiberglass pen that you get uh, online. I think I got this from eBay back a couple of months ago. Um, if you don't remove the, the corrosion, it's going to, to work its way, to eat uh, its way further through the PCB, and you don't want that. So the bottom side of the PCB is in very good shape, so the leakage only happened on the top side here so that's all we have to do or that's quite a lot actually but I'm going to see if I can clean this up then I'm going to wash it again with some white vinegar and also wash the contacts on the connector and hopefully get them clean again otherwise I might replace the whole connector here uh, yeah that's the plan so let's get to it Okay, let's soak this in some vinegar, I guess. I think we can get most of the corrosion off. There's a little left here, but that's not an important part. Yeah, I could spend hours washing this, actually. So, I'm just going to put this in some white vinegar for a while. So, here's my standard white vinegar from the uh, supermarket. 5% uh, acid. That's what it says on the cover. And I decided to just um, put the whole thing into some vinegar. 
to get rid of the rest of the corrosion on there. And yeah. Basically, I'm going to carefully wash this afterwards. So I'm just going to let this sit for an hour or so and then see. <laughs> okay, here we are, like half an hour later. Uh, I'm going to rinse this with the vinegar. Um, scrub this and rinse it with some water. And afterwards I'm going to rinse it thoroughly with alcohol to get rid of any water that's left on there. Uh, the vinegar should neutralize any residue of the battery leakage there. So we won't have more corrosion going on there. Yeah, I think I really got rid of all the cor corrosion there. So now for the alcohol part. The alcohol is actually going to uh, repel the water. So we ideally have a dry and clean PCB afterwards. So this cleaned up pretty nicely and actually I don't see any corrosion anymore, which is good. I'm going to desolder the rest of the uh, old battery terminals there, that's still on there, and uh, prepare it for inserting one of these coin cell holders. Actually, I can see some corrosion on the bottom side here, so I have to clean that up too. There's some corrosion going on there. And you can remove the solder mask pretty easily. Scraping it away with the screwdriver here. And then I'm going to go in with my fiberglass pen again. This is a bit of work, but in the end, you're probably going to have a working, uh, fully working, clock and all memory expansion, which is my original memory expansion from back in the day. So that's pretty special. So it's probably worth the effort. At least it is for me. Let's see. Um, this obviously is the negative side, this is the positive side of the battery. The negative side is just connected to the shield, which is um, common ground on this uh, PCB. Uh, hey, got it out. So now I have to clean this up a bit again. And we are ready to connect our battery holder there. Which I'm going to do in a second. So this is just a regular um, coin cell holder for a 2032 lithium cell. The positive is this because the top of the batteries is the, the positive. So let's see if we can fit it in there. It should just we should probably take this one here. Should just fit nicely. So we are going to fit this in there, but first of all, let's replace some other components to make this uh, compatible with the non rechargeable battery. Okay. Uh, this is a comment from one of my Amiga 500 recreation. Uh, serious videos. This is by Peter Mulholland. He's also very active in the uh, scene 
and in various forums and Facebook groups and stuff like that. So I'm a very knowledgeable person and I'm glad he commented on my video and suggested this. Remove R911, which is a resistor. Remove D911, which is a uh, diode. R913 should be removed. Install the diode from D911 into the place where R913 was. Be, please make sure the diode connects to the plus terminal of C913, which is the capacitor. Um, and then I can just install a normal CR2032 coin cell holder in the holes where the battery was. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to follow Peter's suggestion here and uh, don't use any adapter, PCBs or anything like that and see if that works. It should, probably. So I'm glad I took a picture of the board before because I had to scratch away the silk screen there. This is R911 and this is R913, so I'm going to remove these two. So D911 should also be replaced. It's not easy to desolder stuff from this board because it has been uh, coated with some uh, like uh, lacquer, I think. Uh, it's like a, like a waterproof uh, coating. So maybe that's because they were anticipating some battery leakage or something like that. I don't know. It's for different reasons. If anybody knows why this is coated in lacquer, well, let me know. I have no idea actually. So this should be replaced with a wire link, I think. So I'm going to put in a diode first, and I'm not going to use, as it suggested, the diode we just desoldered. I am going to use one of these, which is a Schottky diode, which have like a lower voltage drop, and they are reacting much faster, and they are, uh, yeah, they are generally just faster, better diodes. And I'm going to put this in because I'm going to use one excess lead um, to make a little wire link there. Um, so this should go where R913 was. The stripe and should connect to the plus terminal. So the plus terminals are this, so we should... Uh, the plus terminal of C913. So I'm checking the connections. Obviously, because there has been corrosion going on. And it connects. So the stripe of the diode should be connected to the positive there. So the diode. This is a um, SB140 DO15. Okay, we should now put a wire link where the diode was. Diode 911, which is there. We should just take one of our leads from the diode. This probably would be much easier if this wasn't coated in this lacquer stuff. Okay, checking the connections here. D911 should go to here, to the other diode, which it does. It should pass. This should pass through here. Yeah, this should pass. Okay, and this should land here. Yes. Uh, diode we just put in should end in the positive terminals here. This end should connect to this. Yep. So we're good. Uh, the positive side is the one with the two uh, things here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to code the bare PCB 
parts here with a new soda mask I just bought and I'm trying out for the first time. It's a UV curable soda mask, so I'm just going to um, apply it with a little brush and then cure it with the UV, UV light and see if that works. I'm trying to leave these spaces open there. So here's the stuff I got. Uh, Xerdex UV curing soda mask ink. I believe, uh, I don't know if there's an original thing, but this should do. This is really, I ordered this directly from China was made in China, um, Xerit X, whatever, uh, should be UV solar mask, I also got in the pack a UV a light, so hopefully this is going to work, so let's see. I never tried this before as I said, and I'm just going to use a small brush um, to apply it I think. Uh, yeah, let's see how this works out. I'm going to get the camera a bit out of the way so you can hopefully still see what I'm doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Doesn't look too bad. I should have used a better brush. <laughs> Just coating my components there a bit. Okay, so I should close this and probably I should put this away from uh, the UV light. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad to me, it just it looks a bit ridiculous because the color is a bit off and stuff like that, but uh, it's gonna do nicely I guess. This is going to do just fine. Okay, let's try and cure it. Uh, applying some UV light. I have no idea how long you should apply this. This is actually just to protect the board from further corrosion and stuff like that. So, yeah, this is hopefully going to be a good idea. It actually looks a lot more like just purple light in real life. Uh, looks weird on camera <laughs> because probably the sensor is picking it up differently than the human eye. And it's picking up more of the spectrum probably. Interestingly I just realized that I'm repairing water battery damage with uh, water batteries in the, in the little flashlight here. <laughs> oh, and it's actually... It's cured quite a bit. That's cool. Okay, so that's not too bad. It's actually working, I think. Nice. So let's put in our battery there. <coughs> It doesn't look too nice, but it's going to protect the board. So, the battery holder, where is it? Where did I put it? There it is. Okay, our battery holder should go in like so. Because this is the positive, this is the negative. I should really wash my hands now, they are a bit green, but it seems to have worked. Okay, let's put in a battery and see if uh, the voltage reaches our clock chip here. So, this should be ground. There we are, 
3.298 so now the clock should be ticking again <laughs> this is usually supplied with um, 3.6 volts I think is the original battery but it works fine down to 3 volts so it works with one of these cells this is a really fresh cell uh, so it has a bit more yeah this appears to work and the diode prevents the voltage from the Amiga to reach the little coin cell there so this should run for people told me that it ran for a couple of years uh, maybe at least a couple of months you can also of course use um, rechargeable replacement batteries you should be careful with rechargeable uh, coin cells because they are lithium cells and they um, have different charging characteristics uh, than the other original batteries so that's gonna be a bit difficult and you could probably damage the batteries in the worst case I haven't really haven't really done any research uh, considering rechargeable coin cells you can use the original like barrel batteries that are in here they are still available um, they are going to last for a couple of years and uh, or a couple of decades even this is pretty old stuff so it starts leaking from my research it seems to be starting um, as soon as you stop using the machines so if you are frequently using your Amiga probably won't get any better leakage this doesn't look all too bad I guess and it provides a little clock chip so um, what I'm going to do is to let this dry fully and then try it in the Amiga <gasps> and before I forget it thank you very much Peter for letting me know about this uh, mod which is pretty easy actually just I'm using another diode than the one you could have used the diode that was in here where we put the wire link so yeah that's all there is to it it seems I hope this still works or at least the RAM expansion still works because that was working before hope it didn't damage it any further than it was and I hope that the clock still works the connections seem to be all there I checked them a bit uh, the corrosion seems to be only a very thin layer on top of the copper layer there so um, I hope to have scraped that all away but it looked pretty pretty good so yeah pretty confident this works and it's going to last me a couple of years at least so I set up my test Amiga which is not the Amiga I refurbished this is pretty yellow still but it's a working Amiga 500 and I thought I'd test the uh, expansion in a machine that's not that uh, nostalgic to me first. <laughs> okay, and the battery holder doesn't quite fit. Should probably have thought about this earlier. So this is not going to fit because of the battery holder protruding too far on this side. Probably I'll just file it down a bit. I could have just used the other uh, soldering spot there because there's two holes for the positive and they should both fit but I didn't do it because it was um, just overlapping this capacitor there yeah so I'm just filing in a little notch there I guess. that's gonna work so this is how this looks now just file it down and this should now fit pretty nicely in there. Okay, there we are. That's in. Okay, let's see if this A sees the um, 512K of extra memory and B if the clock works. Fingers crossed. So first of all we have to check if this works at all uh, with the RAM expansion in there. Let's see if it starts up. Yeah, 
that looks pretty normal to me. Let's see if it boots the workbench. Okay, so it didn't find the clock, which is not great, of course. So it tells me that it didn't find the clock, but uh, at least the memory expansion works. So I checked the connections and uh, they seem to be all present. There is one other possibility. If uh, the clock didn't have any juice for a long time, it might be in an undefined uh, state, so the, the clock chip is not uh, properly working. And uh, we can try the set clock command, which I'm going to do in a second here. And there's a, a set clock reset command, actually, which could help. Let's see, maybe. Probably set clock reset. Let's see if that helps. Yay! Okay. So, this might have fixed the clock. Let's see. Set clock load should load the clock from there. <laughs> okay, and it's it's in an undefined state again. Uh, so we should probably set the clock. So now it seems to be at least uh, recognized. So I should set. I should be able to set the clock via the pref preferences. I guess we'll see. Okay, so this is on 88, which isn't nice, of course. So this should be 19, this should be February, and this should be the 20th. Oh. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, this clock setting is not very convenient, actually. <laughs> so now it's like... 19 so like so use and now we should be able to save it to the clock save uh -uh. maybe okay so that worked that's the actual let's see if it loads again Okay, uh, that seems to have worked. Let's see what happens if we turn the Amiga off and like wait for a couple of minutes and then turn it back on again. Yes, and this seems to be a fully working clock, which is great. This is exactly the right time, I was just waiting for a couple of minutes. Nice! So, so another step towards uh, recreating my Amiga 500 setup from back in the day. So for now, this seems to have worked. <laughs> at least something worked. Uh, I'm At the moment I'm stuck with the Commodore 64 repair. That is a pretty stubborn one. This time uh, it's an Aldi Commodore 64 I'm stuck with at the moment and I can't figure out the fault, so I couldn't really release the video yet. Yeah, clock still works. Nice. Um, yeah, so much for now. There's going to be more Amiga videos sometime. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon, check out my website, check out uh, my other videos if you like this. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. 
I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.